hotel. I couldn't even get out of bed. My wife had to help me up. I couldn't even get out of my car. And here I am. Here I am. I woke up in the middle of the night and cried because I didn't want to have to go to the bathroom because it hurt that much to get out of bed. I mean, really, I felt like I was crippled. I almost hit somebody driving because I couldn't turn around and see the lane beside me. And yet, here I'm standing. Here I'm standing, man. If that ain't the grace of God, I don't know what it is. If that ain't the grace of God, I don't know what it is. And sometimes we just got to stop and look at things from a different perspective. We got to just stop and look at things from a different point of view. Amen. 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 So we are going to continue in our series entitled, We're Family. We are family. We are family. We are family. And uh, one thing, when you think about family, one thing that links members of family together are characteristics. Right? You hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. You hear people say, man, that baby looks just like you. Or that baby acts just like you. Mm -hmm. That baby walks like you. You couldn't deny that baby if you tried. <laughs> right? There are certain characteristics you have that other members of your family have too. It could be your eye color. Mm -hmm. Right? It could be your hair color. But there's always something that links you to people who are your family. Amen. Amen. It's just because you got the same blood in you. Mm -hmm. Right? I have a tooth that's slightly crooked. My daughter has the same slightly crooked tooth. Mm -hmm. Exact same one. My pinky toe literally has no nail on it. <coughs> My daughter's pinky toe literally has no nail on it. If I don't shave, I'll grow hair on this side of my face. My father has the same hair on this side of his face. Mm -hmm. His father has the same hair on this side of his face. Mm -hmm. Right? There's just certain characteristics that tell people who you belong to. Amen. Come on. <laughs> right? Amen. And it's undeniable. It's undeniable. There's just certain things about you that link you to somebody else. Amen. So you can kind of you see what this is here. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of see what this is here, right? So what we have to commit to getting to is a place where we don't identify who we are by what we say, but it's identified by what we do, by who we are, right? And it's, listen, at the end of the day, look, we all belong to somebody. Amen. Now, from a spiritual standpoint, there's only two options. Mm -hmm. And there are two options. So we can't be deceived. You either belong to the Lord or you belong to Satan. Right. That's the two. Amen. There is no, I don't belong to either one. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. This life really is not our own. We are all influenced by whatever spirit we have submitted to. So we can't continue to be known as children of God by what we say because what happens when what you say doesn't match how you feel mm -hmm. and how you feel doesn't match what you do mm -hmm. right at some point somebody ought to be able to see you coming and know who you are Amen. at some point somebody ought to be in your presence somebody ought to hear you talk somebody ought to feel your personality somebody ought to see some characteristics that says who you belong to 
And so I, even when I think about coming to church and get actively involved in the word of God, right? It's not about a ritual. It's not about something we do to stay saved. It's about learning more about our Father so we can be more like him. Amen. You can't be like somebody you don't know. And many of us have, have a parent or a grandparent or somebody in our life that we resent because they weren't around. And a part of our heritage we didn't know. A part of who we were, we never discovered. A part of what we could do was never tapped into because they weren't there. Yet we have a father who has sacrificed everything to be with us, and yet we don't spend time with him. Really, Bishop? Right? We're not trying to be Christians. We're trying to be children of God. We're trying to carry ourselves, not to be perfect, but we're trying to conduct ourselves in a way that somebody will say, that's a believer. That's a believer. Not, a, not that they're perfect, but I can tell by the characteristics. Right? When people see you coming, what do they say? What do they think? If you could read their mind, what would they say? Uh oh, get out of her way. Y'all know how she is. <laughs> Don't make her mad. You know what happens when she go off? Mm -hmm. oh, he ain't no good. Don't even give him the time of day. Don't believe him. Let me say everything he says a lie. What, if you could read people's mind, what would they say? And one of the worst things we can do is talk about our father and people see no resemblance. You ought to come to church. I don't see it working for you. And it working for me has nothing to do with what I drive, has nothing to do with where I live, it has nothing to do with my credit score, has nothing to do with where I work. But it has everything to do with my capacity to love other people when I don't feel love. It has everything to do with my capacity to walk by faith when I can't figure out the way. It has everything to do with my capacity to walk in peace when everything around me is in turmoil. It has everything to do with my capacity to trust God when nothing else makes sense. That's how people identify who my father is. His life's a mess. He should be a mess. Why isn't he a mess? Everything's going bad. He should be doing bad. Why isn't he doing bad? If anybody got a right to curse, if anybody got a right to fall off the wagon, it ought to be him. Why isn't he falling off? What is he happy about? What is he smiling about? Why is he so content? Right? And it doesn't mean everything around you isn't topsy-turvy, but it means if you trust in God, then you will display the characteristics. Amen. Amen. If we spent less time talking about who loves us and more time displaying love, we would reap a harvest of love that we would never have to wonder about it again. Amen. But we say we represent we sh uh, uh, and belong to and are children of a God who love people who didn't love him. So how can we not love people just because they may not love us? Why is my love contingent upon you loving me? But I'm a child of God. Was God's love contingent upon us loving him? Absolutely not. So the nerve of me to say I'm a child of God and I will only love where I'm loved. Amen. I will only give where I know I'm going to get paid back. I will only do where I know I'll get a lot of praise. But I'm a child of God. You see? You see? There's got to be some characteristics. There's got to be some characteristics. The worst thing you can do is declare that you're a child of God and people not be able to tell. Mm -hmm. When I realized that my father had little feet, and his father had little feet, and my uncles had little feet, 
I was the proudest little feet person that I knew. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> now having little feet for a man is a challenge because sometimes you can't get certain shoes because they don't make them. They feel like people with that size feet don't wear these type shoes. But when I realized my dad had little feet, and my granddad had little, I was like, that's pretty cool. I got these little feet from my dad. Because it showed a connection. It showed a link to my heritage. It made me feel like I belong. Right? So, so, the, the necessity, in the words of Apostle Paul, to die every day, meaning to be willing to submit every day, every day to God, every day to his way versus our way, his will versus our will. And I'm not saying things won't get tough, and I'm not saying you won't curse somebody out, and I'm not saying you won't get upset or angry, but what I am saying is when do people see you look like him? And it can't be an exception. It's got to be the rule. Amen. Yeah. It's got to be the rule. Amen. When we act out of character, that's what ought to surprise people. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't expect that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that's how they are. <laughs> Come on now. And the reason why the church gets a bad rep often is because the church is full of reformed sinners. We're like sin and rehab. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to say the only way. But if you really want to get over an addiction, mm -hmm. you got to commit to life. You got to commit to life. You got to commit to life, to rehab. Why? Because there's always something in you that's going to say, this is an easier way. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is what you're more comfortable with. This is what you know. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. And your spirit man is fighting you saying, but that's not who you are. That's not all you know. That's not the only option you have. But if you don't ever feed your spirit, man, if you don't ever spend time with your father, if you don't ever practice the characteristics that resemble him, guess what you're going to go back to? What you're used to. Mm -hmm. Amen. So a reformed sinner got to commit to church so that he's continually feeding his spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that he's continually growing in God. Growing in the word. Growing in his understanding of the word, how to apply the word, how to use the word, how to walk in the word. Yes, yes, that's good. We don't come to church because we're saved. We come to church to get closer to God, Amen. to stay that way. Because I know if I miss a week or two, I'm going to go backwards. Because life is waiting for me. It's waiting. The one time my spirit gets weak, life is waiting, and my flesh is saying, hey, remember when you used to do this? And you used to take all the pain away. Remember when you used to do this? It used to make you feel so much better. And you can do it and nobody will know. But if I step away from my father, then I go back to this. Then what spirit is leading me? Right? Right? So it's okay for them to say, you know how they are. You right. That's how you are. <laughs> the only difference is I'm working mine out in therapy every Sunday. All right now. I'm in rehab. <clears throat> Been there for 20 plus years. <laughs> Why? Because I'm scared to not go. Amen. Amen. I'm scared to not go. I need to be somewhere where God is speaking to me. I need to be somewhere where God is doing something and showing me how to be more like him. How to forgive people when they hurt me. It's hard, but the more I go to him, the more I strive to be like him, the more I'll be able to do it. Because if I can't forgive, how can I receive his forgiveness? 
George, take us to Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 16. Family fruit, right? Family fruit. Family fruit. For most parents, what we try to do is lay out a blueprint uh -oh, for our children to say, here's a, here's a path to success. And most of the time, that blueprint is, 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 is written with our own failures. Don't do this, because this is going to lead you here. I did it. Avoid that, because that's going to take you there. I did it. O.C. and I used to bond when I was 14, 14, 15 years old. She used to sit down and talk, and she used to just say, here, let me just tell you about some of the mistakes I've made in my life. And that would be our conversation. Our conversation would be mistake after mistake. And she would say, I'm telling you this so you don't make the same mistake. Amen, amen. I'm trying to set you up. We went into business together, and we would be in the car before we go make purchases, and she would coach me on what to say and give me the money and let me go in, and I was a big shot. So you say it just like this, and you look just like this, and don't back off, and just do this, and do that, and do this, and then at the very end, you pull out the money. And I come out like a big shot, like, man, that's pretty cool. Right? So we do the same for our kids. Right? We try to lay a blueprint to say, listen, my life might have not been perfect, but yours can be better if you follow this. Amen. So God has given us a blueprint to say, listen, Adam made some bad mistakes. But if you would just follow Jesus, you'll get back. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation is here. Mm -hmm. You can live the life I intended for you to live all along if you simply follow Christ. So let's look at this. I'm not as focused this morning on the fruits of the Spirit as I am on two particular things. Look at verse 16. He says, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So again, we got an option. Listen, God is not going to choose you to be his father. You have to choose him to be your father. But the only way to deny the flesh is to walk in the spirit. Because you can't do both. It's one or the other. Right? It says, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me get through this. For the spirit lusts against the, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Contrary to one another. <clears throat> Listen, your flesh does not like your spirit. Amen. And your spirit does not like your flesh. Mm -hmm. They're at odds. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you feel like you're going crazy, it's because you might be going crazy. Because <laughs> there's two things going on inside of you, and you haven't made one more dominant over the other. So yeah, sometimes you want to pull your hair out. Sometimes you want to blow your brains out. Because you haven't made a decision who you're following. So you're being led back and forth. Come on. Back and forth. Hmm. We do this because it makes God happy. We do this because it makes me happy. But well, God ain't did nothing for me. Well, I can do it for myself. Hmm. And you're back and forth. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you wish. Where are you? But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Let me, let me get through this, because I'm, I'm going to get sidetracked here. Not the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, con hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, mm -hmm. wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Right? In other words, the work of the flesh 
It's easy to see. That's why people are quick to judge. Mm -hmm. But so are the works of the Spirit. They're equally easy to see. Mm -hmm. Right? Which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because if you practice these things, these things are of the enemy. So you can't inherit the kingdom of God if you're following the father of death. Mm. Right? There is no middle ground. There is no gray spot. All right, all right. We either are or we're not. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. All right, all right. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm a child of God, people ought to be able to tell. Amen. Simple and plain. Simple and plain. Do they say he got the same crooked tooth as his father? Do they say he's got the same little feet as his father? When people see you, do they automatically relate a resemblance to God? When was the last time you did something for somebody that you got nothing in return for? Come on now. May not have even got a thank you. We don't like that. We don't like that. There's a book called The Five uh, Languages of Love that's been um, also adapted. The same authors adapted that to work. And it's The Five Languages of Appreciation. I went through a training about that a couple weeks ago. And my language of appreciation is words of affirmation. Just five languages. My, my primary one is words of affirmation. I, I, I need to hear it. I, I need somebody to say it to me. Tell me I'm appreciated. Tell me thank you. Send me an email. I hate cards. Everybody who knows me know I hate cards. Don't ever waste your money buying me a card. Mm -hmm. don't, I, don't even, I don't even read them half the time. I got a card from my boss in the mail. I was so happy, man. I told him, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Then I tore it right up. Threw it away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it made me happy. So here's the thing we got to be careful of. we got to be careful. We're not so focused on what we think we need to make us feel good that we're not giving other people what they need to make them feel loved. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord. Right? And we're selfish. We can be selfish. Mm -hmm. After all, what, what, what am I thinking about if it's not myself? Mm -hmm. After all, what am I focused on if it's not me? Making me better. Making me wealthier. Making me happier. What am I focused on? What am I thinking about? Right? Mm -hmm. But how much energy do I put in praying for somebody else? Come making on. them healthy. Making them happy. Mm -hmm. Making them wealthy. Supporting their vision. Supporting their dream. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not what God looks like. Amen. That's not what God looks like. Lord Jesus. Make no mistake, what's in you comes out of you. Amen. The Bible says, and I know this is relative to food in, in that particular context, but see, I need a Bible study to, to deal with this appropriately. <laughs> but since I don't have one yet, I'm just going to graze on past it. <clears throat> the Bible says, it's not what goes into a man that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of him. Now, let me tell you the danger in that. Because some people take that and say, uh-oh, green light. Green light. That's the one I was waiting on right there. 
If you really, if you really heard just what I just said. But the problem is, if you put something into you that's forcing the real you out of you, mm -hmm. the exposure is still there. Mm -hmm. So it really ain't about what's going in. Mm -hmm. It never is. It's about what's already there that ultimately is going to come out. Yes, yes. Right? <laughs> whether you sneak it out, whether you get bold enough to let it out, <laughs> whether you get high enough to not care this out, whether you get rich enough to think I can afford for it to be out, <laughs> whatever's in is coming out. Oh. And you can't look like God if all you got in you is the devil. Oh, right now. If all you got in you is the works of the flesh, you will not produce the fruits of the spirit. It can't happen. Pear trees don't produce apples. All right. Right? Yeah. So at some point, if you're not spending time with your father and learning how to be more like him, then nothing in you is going to reflect him. All right. Because what's in is coming out. What's in is coming out. And the reality is you can't hide it from God anyway. He sees inside out. He sees inside out, right? We get duped by people because people can deceive us. You know, they can, they can present one way and mean another way, present one way and do another way, present one way and feel another way, but with God, he sees inside out, right? So he judges the heart because he looks at the motivation behind why. I'm going to do this why. I'm going to say this why. I'm going to go there why. It's the motivation behind it. And that ultimately determines who you're being led by. Right? Who do you listen to? Who do you take advice from? Who do you pattern yourself after? Right? I often talk about, you know, the difference in when I was growing up versus times like now. Right, when I've been working since I was 14 years old, nonstop. Even when I couldn't get out of bed, my wife had to help me get out of bed, I still went to work. Mm -hmm. Thought of not going to work didn't cross my mind. Mm -hmm. I was walking around, she had to, she had asked her to show you to at the church, man. She she showed me how it really looked. It was pretty bad too. Like the mechanical man. She's like, that look on your face, I was so sad. But I was ironing my shirt and I was ironing my pants. Because that's, that's, that's how I grew up. That's what men do. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Somebody put something on TikTok and all of a sudden, you know, they're overnight sensation. But that's not really how it works. For the rest of us, we just got to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, got, we just got to work. But who do you take advice from? Who are you patterning yourself after? Nobody can consistently do what they don't believe. All right. It's impossible. If you don't believe it, at some point, you're going to fall off. It's impossible to consistently do. You can pretend. What season are we on, right? You can be anybody you want to be. That's why everybody loves the internet, too. Did you know that? That's why people really love the internet. Because you can be anybody you want to be. Now, I'm not going to say what I want to say because I don't want to feel like I'm poking at people, right? <laughs> but you could literally be next to nothing and get on the internet and be all that. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. It's like being a character in your own story. <laughs> people say things on the internet they would never say in real life. Take a stand on the internet that they wouldn't take if somebody put a gun to their head. Champion causes that nobody would ever know that they were part of. Because they can hide. They can hide. If you really thought about the appeal, and I don't want to get into the origin of Halloween because that's not what I'm talking about today, although I could, but that's not my point. The real appeal of Halloween is not the fright or terror. The real appeal to Halloween is here's a time when you get to transform yourself into somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
And the costume is just a part of it. The personality has to happen next. <laughs> you got to get in the character. Sometimes I'm around out of state and acting goofy, my wife will say, why you gotta look like that? I say, because I can't have do it. If I'm gonna get into it, I gotta get all the way into it. I feel like it looks like this, so I gotta look like it. Y'all have a voice you have to put up with, I'm telling you. But it's the appeal of just saying, I can for one moment I can step out of my life and step into something else. But if it's not in you, as I close, it's not going to come out. And there's going to be a day, there's going to be a time when we're going to be exposed, right? Not to hurt us, but either we're working for the common good of the kingdom or we're not. Either we're really trying to save other people or we're not. Because if you're down on your luck and things ain't going well for you, you ought to be the single most encouraging person you know. Mm -hmm. Let's want somebody to encourage me. Let's want somebody to pat me on the back. Where's my Barnabas? But if you want it, sow it. You got to do it. That's right. Sow it. Mm -hmm. And let that work for you. Mm -hmm. You ever pray for somebody when... You were in a total wreck. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Like I'm 10 seconds from just driving until I run out of gas. Mm -hmm. But you prayed for somebody else. You took time to talk to somebody else, encourage them, mm -hmm. fighting back your own tears, mm -hmm. thinking about the own mess of your life. Mm -hmm. But you're like, hang in there. God got you. You can do it. Every day we got to make a decision. Amen. Every day we got to make a decision. When I get up and get dressed and get out, I got to decide who do I want people to see? Mm -hmm. What's my heritage? What am I most proud of? Do I want people to be excited when I come around? Man, I'm so glad. This guy just, he just has a way of lifting up spirits. Mm -hmm. He just got a way of getting everybody excited and motivated. And listen, we all got different gifts and talents and all different things to do, but I'm just saying, are people happy to see you coming? Mm -hmm. I wish you rather you wouldn't. I want people to see my father. I don't want to just say I'm a child of God. I want people to know it. Amen. I want people to see. I want people to tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want anybody to say I'm perfect because that'll never be, but I do want people to say, you want to... The best compliment Peter ever got, he, he physically fought to deny. Mm -hmm. You one of them. You with him. Like that's that's like I could die at that moment, because I wouldn't want to mess it up after that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to tell another lie. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to do nothing wrong. If somebody looked at me and said, You one of them, Lord, just take me at that moment. So I don't I just don't want to blow it. <laughs> and they said, You one of them. You just like him. I saw you in it. You act like him. Then Peter changed the way he acted. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't look like. Mm -hmm. But they looked at him and said, you won. Mm -hmm. Now people say a lot of things about me and a lot of things about you. Mm -hmm. cool. I just like one of them to be, he looked like one of them. Mm -hmm. Amongst all the things that may ever be said about me, I just wish to God, somebody at some point in my life just look at me and say, he one of them. Because that's usually how they say it, right? Because <laughs> we beat them with that word. <laughs> we beat them with that word, right? <laughs> but think about it. Think about if our motivation was, let me, let me, let me check myself. Let me check my temper. Let me check my tone. Let me check my words. Let me check my body language. Let me say I'm sorry. Because I'm just trying to capture a moment where somebody sees me and says, you must be one of them. You must belong to him. And if that was our motivation, 
Change our whole life. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. But remember this. Your car doesn't display who you belong to. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind it is or how many you have. Mm -hmm. That doesn't tell people you're a child of God. Where you live doesn't tell people you're a child of God. That doesn't, that doesn't tell people anything. Right? Amen. But it's what's inside of you that comes out of you. That shows people who you are. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. The capacity and willingness to love when you don't feel love. For people to see you and say, man, golly, she's going through it. But boy, she, she hanging in there, boy. Her, she, that, she don't that God thing for real. <laughs> she hanging in there. Oh, yeah. I'd rather somebody see that and say, God, every time something happens, boy, he start going back to his old way. Let me start figuring it out. Let me start shaking and baking. Let me start maneuvering. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, let them see me hold on in the struggle. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Just because I ain't got no money don't mean I ain't got God. Amen. But to see me stand through it, mm -hmm. and I can't pay my bills, and I'm still there, and I still got joy, and I'm still encouraging people, and I still love, that shows who I belong to. That shows who I belong to because it shows I'm not a slave to things around me. Mm -hmm. And I don't serve those things. Amen. And I'm not a slave to my flesh. Amen. I don't do what it says. Mm -hmm. I do what God says. Amen. That's my father. Amen. I just want to look like him. I just want people to see me and say, mm -hmm. you know who your dad is. Mm -hmm. 